Uh, Piers, uh, will he change as president? Because he hasn't changed in the run-up to being inaugurated. No, I don't think he will. I don't think he sees any point in changing. Why would he change from the personality that just won? As he just said, I won. And all the bleeding heart liberals in the world can all weep, wail and gnash their teeth and say how ghastly this all is and Hillary should have won and so on. But actually, he's got an incredible mandate. Remember, Trump has the House, he has the Senate, he's going to have the Supreme Court. Uh, he's got an incredible power right now and he doesn't have to listen to anybody. I spoke to him a couple of weeks ago and specifically about Twitter and asked him what the impact was of Twitter. And he said, look, I had 16 million people following me on Twitter. The same again on Facebook. I was able to bypass mainstream media, bypass all normal political convention and talk directly to potential voters. Secondly, I could turn on the TV in the morning, I could see a rival getting all the airtime and I could fire off a tweet, he said, for free, he was a marketing man, he loved that, and boom, I'm the news agenda again. And he said, and he was able to use that magnificent. And as he says, Twitter to him didn't cost him a dollar. So he's going to carry on tweeting in the middle of the night as president of the United States? Well, he doesn't sleep much. I mean, he literally, in the last six weeks of the election campaign, I was told he was living off 21 hours of uh, a super night. But you've got to remember about Trump. He's never had an alcoholic drink, never had a cigarette, never had a drug. He's a very fit guy for 70. Mm. He's got incredible energy. He's incredibly competitive. And he's, at his heart, a businessman. If you look at him as a political ideologue, you completely miss the point of Trump. That's why I think, don't take anything he says completely literally. Look upon it as a negotiating point that he started from and try and do business with him as a business person would and you may be pleasantly surprised. There's one thing that does strike me, which is he treats the press or the media entirely different from any other politician or, or, or main politician in that normally the polit politicians try to get the media off a particular subject or they try to conciliate with the media, he just comes and punches the media in the nose when he doesn't yeah, like This could catch on, you know. There are two things. That you're absolutely right. That is, I mean, for a start, no one could accuse him of letting that victory go to his head. You know, he hasn't suddenly <laughs> said, well, I've won, I'll now be this lofty president. He's as exactly the same as he was before. And you're absolutely right. What's fascinating the relationship with the media? I haven't met, and I'm sure you haven't, us a lot haven't, uh, met a party leader who isn't obsessed with the media, mm. but they pretend not to be. You know, they say, you, I bump into people say, oh, someone told me about a column. I didn't read it, of course. He doesn't pretend. He's utterly transparent in his obsession with the media. Now, how that plays out, who knows? But it's, but, it's a completely different dynamic than anyone's seen before. But here's the issue. He has appointed an unusual cabinet, a cabinet that you could criticise in many ways, but nearly all of them are independent people in their own right. A lot of them are wealthy too. They have their own views. Uh, they may now like what he tweets at three in the morning and he does have to deal with this cabinet now. I mean, mad dog uh, Mattis, the, now the defence secretary, mm. he might not like what's said about China at three in the morning. He might not. And I think this is where it gets very complicated. I mean, we can't imagine here in our political system any kind of appointments like this, you simply wouldn't have a lineup of billionaires of the kind of background no, that, he, that he has chosen. Uh, but I don't think that's going to stop him, as Piers said, doing, saying and tweeting what he thinks. Yes, maybe it'll cause him some internal issues when the following day he has to square it with whatever they think, but, you know, he's just going to press ahead. Are we any clearer mm. yet in terms of policy? And I know policy hasn't really featured hugely or bigly, as somebody might say, <laughs> in, this camp in the campaign of 2016. Do we have any real clear idea yet what Mr Trump is hoping to achieve? Well, he has had some consistent themes going back over 20, 25 years. One of them is a deep scepticism about international trade and the kind of deals that America has been doing over that period. Mm. And it's been so consistent that it's hard to spin as just something you say during the course of a campaign to get elected. Ultimately, I think Piers is correct that he won't change. When he won the election and he gave a relatively magnanimous victory speech, I thought actually... His ego has been sated. He's got what he wants. He will end up governing as a slightly eccentric New York liberal. Everything will be fine. Now, in the intervening weeks, it's come to my <laughs> attention that that might not be entirely true. <laughs> and it's a test. It's a real test of the American system, the checks and balances, the foreign policy establishment, which is about to have all their orthodoxies mm. disrupted. It's the biggest test of the American system, quite possibly. Well, since I think the it's Civil the end War. of the system. I mean, I think he's completely ripped up the American political system. Washington, as we know it, is dead. 
Trump is going to do things his way. He doesn't care, frankly, what any of us think, however venerable we may be. And in the end, what Trump is betting on is if he can deliver for the people that voted for him, mm -hmm. who felt disaffected, disenfranchised, 70% of Americans, remember, before the election, despite what Barack Obama would have you believe, were <laughs> disaffected with the way the country was heading. And they voted accordingly. They want to see jobs. They want to see the economy in good shape. They want to feel secure. They want to feel that immigration has been tightened. And if Trump can deliver on those main themes for the Rust Belt communities of America, I'm telling you, he will go down as a very successful president. And all the offensive rhetoric and the argy-bargy with CNN and whatever it may be will be completely irrelevant. Let me finish with Mr Trump on a parochial question. Uh, is it fair to say that he's quite well disposed to this country? He and and that he would country. like, that he's up for a speedy free trade, a bilateral free trade deal? Well, here's where I think we've got to be sensible as a country. And you can mock and abuse him all you like, but come Friday, he's the President of the United States, the most powerful man in the world. He said to me, he feels half British. His mum was born and raised in Scotland until she was 18 mm. years old. He feels half British. He loves Britain. His mum, his own mother, used to love watching the Queen. And he feels very, you know, I, I would roll out the red carpet for Trump, bring him, let him meet Her Majesty, talk about his mum. Because the crucial point for us, surely, as a country, is coming out of Brexit, and now it looks like a hard Brexit, if we can do a very speedy deal within an 18-month period with the United States, which really sends a message to the world, we're back in the game, that is a hugely beneficial thing for this country. Okay. Well